Twitter, a fun place to share jokes and find out which celebrities are dead. <laughs> now, you may remember, last week, Elon Musk became Twitter's largest shareholder by buying 10% of their stock, which gives him majority control of Denzel expressing relief. Well, <laughs> now, Elon Musk has decided he doesn't want 10% of Twitter, no. He wants 100% of Twitter. Yeah, because he has plans to make it the best social media site in the world. Tesla CEO Elon Musk is offering to buy Twitter, all of the shares he does not currently own, for $43.4 billion in cash. He also says he wants to take the company private. Musk writing a letter to Twitter chair Brett Taylor saying, quote, Twitter has extraordinary potential. I will unlock it. The a top priority I have, I would have, is is eliminating the the spam and, and scam bots, um, and the bot armies that are in Twitter. Um, they make the product much worse. <laughs> oh shit! It's happening, people. Elon Musk is attempting a hostile takeover of Twitter. He's offering forty-three billion dollars, all cash, take it or leave it. Yeah, that was his offer. His actual offer: forty-three billion dollars, all cash, take it or leave it. Which you gotta admit, it's a very Indian uncle way to negotiate, you know? <laughs> yeah, Indian uncles always think if they put cash at the end of the offer, then you can't refuse, you know? It's like, Trevor, I'll give you $47 for your car. What? No. Cash. <laughs> no, it's a car. I'm gonna give you that, it's a car. Now, because Elon Musk is Elon Musk, he didn't, he didn't just make a normal offer, no. He offered to pay $54.20 per share. Yeah, not $54 exactly, no, 50 for 20. <laughs> and that's how you know that you're too rich. <laughs> when you're spending an extra few million dollars just to slip a wee joke in <laughs> to your takeover bit, and he didn't even have to waste that extra money. We already knew he was high when he said he would, quote, unlock Twitter's full potential, man. <laughs> Which, by the way, am I the only person who got freaked out by that part where he said that? He says he wants to unlock Twitter's full potential. I thought Twitter was unlocked. <laughs> no, like, is there, is there a locked version we don't know about? Are there parts of Twitter that are still shut down? Well, maybe just keep them like that. Yeah, never once have I logged onto Twitter and been like, man, I just wish this place would let loose. <laughs> People really hold back on here, all nuanced and shit. <laughs> but that's the thing with Elon Musk. Nobody knows what he's gonna do. He's super smart, definitely. But he admits that he also loves dumb jokes. So we don't know how this could turn out. This, this, this could turn Twitter into the best version of itself, or he could just rename tweets farts <laughs> and retweets refarts. <laughs> the United Nations today refarting a fart from President Biden. <laughs> Many farters online saying that this fart went too far. <laughs> Moving on to Duffer. <laughs> now, I know a lot of people uh, don't like Elon Musk, but I will admit, some of the suggestions that he had for Twitter are not that bad, right? He wants an edit button, I like that idea. All right, he wants to make the algorithm more transparent so we know why things are trending or why tweets go places, I like that, right? And he wants to get rid of bots and scams, which I love. I hate the bots on Twitter. Do you know how many hours I've wasted talking to Oprah 2467 Crypto? <laughs> Only to find out later that it wasn't really Oprah. <laughs> I told her my deepest secrets and I gave her money. I mean, yeah, in hindsight, it was weird that Oprah was asking me for money, but <laughs> she seemed so real. And that would catch anyone, guys. And this is also a risky business move, because if you kick all the bots off of Twitter, that's like 99% of the platform, right? Who's gonna be left, huh? Yeah, it's like trying to ban all sex criminals from Hollywood. You're just gonna be left with <laughs> Paul Rudd and Baby Yoda. That's gonna be it. <laughs> Sorry, what's that? Baby Yoda did what? <laughs> Sorry, guys, it's just Paul Rudd now. That's all that's left. <laughs> all right, but let's move on from Twitter to another place where nobody gets along and nothing gets done, the US Senate. <laughs> For decades now, one of the most prestigious members of the Senate has been Dianne Feinstein, Democrat from California, right? She's been a leading voice on environmental issues and LGBTQ rights, and she was the first woman ever to chair the Intelligence Committee, which was a big deal, but recently, some of her colleagues have been voicing concern about whether the senator still has the capacity to do her job. And at 88, they're wondering if it's time for the senator to step down. 
Some members of Congress are reportedly expressing concerns about Senator Dianne Feinstein's memory. Now, the San Francisco Chronicle reports it spoke to four U.S. senators, three of whom are Democrats, a California Democratic member of Congress, and several former Feinstein staffers. All of them say her memory appears to be getting worse. Now, the Chronicle says one of them even started talking to other people in Congress to see if they could convince her to resign. An unnamed Democrat in Congress who has worked with the senator for 15 years had to reintroduce themselves several times during a recent policy discussion. Feinstein also allegedly repeated several questions during that encounter. Whew. All right, this is a tough one. It really is. I mean, on the one hand, you don't want to expel Senator Feinstein just because she's old, right? But on the other hand, if she is losing her faculties, you can't have her making decisions that affect the entire country. You know, this, this, like, this reminded me of my grandfather, right? He used to babysit me <laughs> when I was younger, which was fine, which was fine, until I realized that his mind was slipping and I could trick him. <laughs> yeah, like one day I tricked him into spending all the family's grocery money on Tamagotchis instead of food. <laughs> and that night when my mom got home, she saw there was no food. And she made me eat my grandfather. <laughs> no, I'm joking, I'm joking. I'm joking, she just beat the shit out of me, that's all. I'm joking. <laughs> but you know what, I'm glad it happened. Yeah, because it inspired me to work hard so I could make enough money to buy my own Tamagotchis. And look at me now, mom, a grown man with 10,000 Tamagotchis. <laughs> I did it, mom, you can't touch me. Yeah, how do you like me now? <laughs> By the way, if anyone wants 10,000 Tamagotchis, DM me. <laughs> Look, here's the thing. Everyone in Congress is asking the question now, because of the story, should there be an age limit, right? Because there's already a minimum age. So people are saying there should be a maximum age. Well, I think if you're not gonna have a maximum age, then it's only fair that you get rid of the minimum. You know, yeah. Because right now you have to be 30 years old to be a senator. Why? Huh? Let's be honest. You, you, could, you could vote for Senator Baby. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds ridiculous. But think about it, Senator Baby isn't fleeing to Cancun during a power failure, huh? <laughs> Senator Baby... <laughs> Senator Baby is responsible. Senator Baby isn't cheering on insurrectionists, no. <laughs> Senator Baby wants one thing and one thing alone. Baba. <laughs> and you might not know what Baba is, but do you know what Rand Paul is talking about 90% of the time? <laughs> I rest my case. Like, do you realize the average age of the Senate is 64? Average age. And I'm not saying that they can't do their job. I'm just saying, how invested are you in the future of the planet if you'll be leaving soon, you know? <laughs> no, I, I, hey, I know how I treat the urinal at Disney World. <laughs> That's not my house. <laughs> and just to be clear, just so to be clear, people are like, oh, it's ages. No, look, I'm not saying that being younger guarantees your brain works, okay? Like, look at Madison Cawthorn, he's 26. He's having all these delusions of, like, cocaine and orgies in Congress, which you know isn't a real thing. People in Congress aren't having orgies. And if they were, they'd probably be terrible. <laughs> I respectfully remind the uh, gentle lady from Minnesota that she's out of order. The gentleman from Montana was supposed to go second. <laughs> and as for me, I yield the remainder of my time. <laughs> I got a lot more excited than I thought. A lot more. All right, let's move on to some sports news. It is NBA playoff season, that magical time of the year when the league's best players battle it out for the championship and the Knicks go on their annual fishing trip. <laughs> now, there's always a lot of drama in the NBA playoffs, but last night, one player got a little too dramatic. The Charlotte Hornets had a rough night in Atlanta. Charlotte getting frustrated in the fourth quarter. Miles Bridges gets ejected after a fan yells at him on the way out. He threw his mouth guard, hitting a girl in the stands. After the game, Bridges called his actions unacceptable and went on Twitter to see if he could contact that young lady to make up for what he did. I was upset about a call. I was aiming for the guy that was screaming at me, and it, you know what I'm saying, it hit a, it hit a little girl, so. That's definitely unacceptable on my part, and I take, you know, full responsibility. Okay, all right. First of all, good on Miles Bridges for taking responsibility, you know, for throwing his mouth guard into the crowd. I like that he said, he's like, look, man, I shouldn't have done that. Uh, I will also say this. If you're a basketball player who shoots for the heckler, but you hit a teenage girl, <laughs> kind of prove the heckler's point. That's your only job. 
And to be fair, that girl played horrible defense, but still, I'm not blaming her, I'm not blaming her. Now, you know, if you follow sports, you may have noticed that this feels like it's a bit of a trend recently. You know, fans antagonizing the players or players losing their shit with the crowd. Like a few days ago, Kyrie Irving, he got in the face of a fan who shouted something at him. But then it turned out that he got angry at the wrong fan. All right? Yeah, and then in the Premier League, Cristiano Ronaldo slapped a kid's phone out of his hand because he was injured and the kid was filming and then he was frustrated and he, he said sorry afterwards, but still, people, like, I don't know if confrontations are getting worse because of COVID and like athletes and fans are angry, but it does seem like everyone needs to chill, okay? <laughs> yeah, if you're a professional athlete, you have to accept that part of your job is getting yelled at by strangers. It's part of the job. All right, it just comes with the territory. Certain jobs do. It's the same way strippers know people are gonna be throwing money at them. <laughs> yeah, if you are a stripper and you have a fear of flying objects, you're in the wrong job, you know? <laughs> if you're like, ah, 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 just deposit it into my account. That's not how this works. <laughs> Athletes have to learn to ignore it. You know, if you don't wanna get yelled at by strangers, there are a lot of other jobs where that doesn't happen. Like, like I've never once been at the dentist's office just like, boo! This dude sucks at scraping my gums, boo! You're not even a real doctor! <laughs> but I will say this, the fans also need to chill. Remember, athletes are human beings, all right? Have some respect, have some compassion. Because a lot of the fans right now are filming themselves saying crazy shit to athletes because they know if they get a reaction, they're gonna go viral, right? Like last month, one dude heckled a player on the Portland Trailblazers by talking shit about his grandmother who had recently died of COVID. Exactly. Uh, guys, I'm sorry, if you're looking for heckling material in the obituaries, that's taking things too far, all right? Say something about the game and move on. That's a shitty thing to do. Like, you, you had a professional basketball game. It's supposed to be fun. Why are you so angry? There's people in the stands all the time. <laughs> this is fun. I almost feel like NBA games need to add like a courtside therapist for the fans. <laughs> Yeah, I, I guess when I, when I screamed that LeBron sucks donkey balls, I was, I, I was really angry at my dad for never hugging me. I, <laughs> Le LeBron reminds me of my dad. He, he left to go to another city and he pretended like it was normal and that's why I hate LeBron. <laughs> <laughs> So, my advice would be for everyone to take the temperature down just a notch, and remember that the point of going to a game isn't to try and get a professional athlete to beat the shit out of you, okay? The point of going to the game is to bribe your kids with snacks so they pick you in the custody battle. Remember what it's about. <laughs> it's about love. All right, finally, let's talk about homelessness. It is a big problem in America, and not everyone is offering helpful solutions. All right? For instance, in Tennessee, yesterday, the state senate passed a bill that would make it a crime to sleep under bridges. Yeah, which I guess could save lives given the state of infrastructure in this country, but I don't think that, that's what they were going for. You know, they just don't want to have to look at homeless people anymore, so they made it a crime. But here's, here's my question, whenever they do this, what are the homeless people supposed to do? Right? When you make it a crime, what, like what do you think is gonna happen? You think they're gonna be like, well, if sleeping under this bridge is illegal, I. I guess I'll finally buy that townhouse I've been looking at. <laughs> yeah, it was all about my options. Because honestly, these policies are pretty typical of the approach to homelessness in many parts of the country. And now, the reason that people are talking about this bill in particular, this one, is because of this really inspirational story that one Republican told during the debate. Mr. Speaker, I haven't given you all a history lesson in a while, and I want to give you a little history on homelessness. 19 and 10, Hitler decided to live on the streets for a while. So for two years, Hitler lived on the streets and practiced his oratory and his body language and how to connect with the masses, and then went on to lead a life that got him in the history books. So a lot of these people, it's not a dead end. Very interesting angle to take. <laughs> yeah, that's right, folks. Uh, Hitler was uh, homeless and it made him a better person. <laughs> Yes, don't despair, homeless people. If you really apply yourself, one day you too could do genocide. <laughs> <laughs> like, just, just checking the Hitler in this inspiring story. Is this Adolf Hitler? Yeah? 
like, there isn't another Hitler somewhere in history who was an astronaut or something, right? And I was just like, hey, I'm Hitler. What? Yeah, yeah, I'm the Olympic skater, Steve Hitler. Oh, shit. You should just go by Steve, man. Yeah. <laughs> you, you realize comparing homeless people to the worst person in history is definitely not going to help them, right? Because who's going to want to help homeless people now? This is going to be people like, oh, no, I'm not giving you money. You could become the future Hitler. <laughs> and by the way, who even knew that Hitler was homeless? Did you guys know that? No. I, didn't, I didn't know this. I don't know about you, but it, it creeps me out when people know too much about Hitler's life. <laughs> yeah, there's something really disturbing about anyone who's like, did you know Hitler's favorite fruit was the mango? <laughs> I'm, I'm, just, I'm just gonna go over here now. <laughs> it's a weird thing. All right, that's it for the headlines, which means it's time for us to check in on this weekend's weather forecast with our very own Desi Lydic, everybody. <laughs> Good to, uh, good to see you, Desi. How you doing? Great. Good to see you. We're back with our audience. Yeah. Great. It's a good day. It's a good day. Also, you'll like this. I set up a booby trap in my building to catch whoever's been stealing my neighbor's paper before I could steal it. <laughs> so... Huh. That's a good, good thing for a bad thing. Oh, oh well, yeah. yeah. We'll get him. We'll get him. Or her. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, Desi? Yeah. What's been going on? God, that story, how crazy. Did that guy actually use Hitler as an inspiration story? Right. Are we doing that now? Are we doing like hashtag Hitler goals? <laughs> I mean, it's bad enough. Like girl boss culture already makes me feel so unaccomplished. Now I gotta live up to Hitler? <laughs> Well, I don't fair. think you have to, I, you know. No, it's like too much pressure, man. It's not cool. Although I will say, if it works, I will use that tactic to get my kid to finish his dinner. <laughs> yeah. Do you know who would eat all this broccoli? Hitler. If he can do it, so can you. That's going to be a weird thing to teach your kid, yeah. I think. Yeah. You also, know? that mouth guard thing? What the hell? Trevor, have you ever been hit in the head with a mouth guard? I actually have once. Yeah. Me, me too. You have? Yeah. Like every day in third grade, <laughs> and fourth, and fifth, and sixth. Yeah, it was tough. The teachers were super mean at that school. <laughs> it's a very strange school. That anyway, Desi, um, what's going on uh, with the weather this weekend? Oh, come on, Trevor. The weather. <laughs> I mean, we know each other better than that. We can cut the small talk. I'm not your neighbor in the elevator. <laughs> Let's have a real conversation, you know, heart to heart. Tell me, what are your deepest, darkest fears? No, no I want to know what, what the weather is not small. Um, Here's another one. When was the last time you cried? No, I, I... You can tell me. It's just you, me, all these lovely people. No, it's not small. Talk. I was saying the weather. I was, yeah. talking, uh, I was talking about the weather, like, behind. It's behind oh, you. Oh, God, yeah. The past is always haunting <laughs> us right at the back door, man. Can't escape it. You no. really can't. No, no, I'm, you see, I, this... Here's a question. Are you asking about the weather, or is it your inner child? <laughs> that's what I want to know. What is it specifically about the weather that's triggering you? It's, it's the picture that's behind you. Yeah. It's like the news we it do. It is. It's hard. It's like uh, you can you can keep those memories right up here, and they just Th come they're not memories. Again. I feel like nobody's trying to make a new show with me. Um, you don't understand. You know, I'm glad we had this talk because I could tell you were really frustrated. I I have gotten frustrated. Yeah. I. Uh... Yeah. Well, I'm glad I could help. Is there a, you need anything else from me while I'm here? No, we're good. We're good. Desi Lydic, everybody. <laughs> 